Hello and welcome to today's anatomy question. I'm Lizzie Lasseter and joining us in giggles is Mary Richards. Hi, Mary. Hi, Lizzie. Welcome back to our Essential Alignment series. We're working through Mama's book, 30 Essential Yoga Poses. The link is below if you want to order the book. It's a great resource. I can't believe this book is only like whatever it is, $20 or $30. Like you get so much actually. It's one of my favorite movement books. Yeah. You know, cause I don't just have yoga books in my science library and my movement library. I have, you know, all kinds, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Sorry, we interrupted. Yeah, no, you have an extensive library. I know that. And and this book is, it, it really holds its own and it's, it's, anyway. So today we're doing pose number 21, which is Bharad Vajasana, a simple seated twist. So Mary, what is your thesis for this pose that you want to share with us today? What's one idea that will make this pose more pleasurable for us? Lead with your pelvis. Okay. Lead with your pelvis. Change the anchor in the pose. Okay. So all poses have an anchor. We have to be grounded in order to move. But typically the way Bharad Vajasana is instructed is that you anchor through the sitting bones. Mm -hmm. And that's not the way we move, especially right. in rotation. So say, so yeah, say one more thing about that just in general. Why, why do you want us to move our pelvis into the twist with us? Because when we move from the pelvis, we're moving from the transverse axis of the hips, which are a ball and socket joint. So what is this? A lot of what? Rotation. Right. Over and around. But we, when we practice seated twists in particular, like Vajrasana with an anchored pelvis, with our sitting bones anchored to the floor, we're trying to force rotation into joints that don't move that way, specifically the sacroiliac joints and the facet joints of the lumbar. Mm -hmm. And so put the rotation, initiate the rotation from where it's, naturally placed which is in the hips and tell us scare us mary tell us our, the kind of nightmare what's the what's the negative consequence if we try to twist in the sacroiliac joint and in the lumbar spine uh just say goodbye to the joint congruence between your sacrum and your ilia mm -hmm. because you're putting so much torsion force through those joints and the SI joints, they don't like to twist. Yeah. And you know, they don't like a lot of movement anyway, because in any given range, uh, any given direction of the SI joints, um, possible directional movement, it's got a little bit of play, but not a lot of movement. So if we then try to twist, well, that jams up those joints. It can actually cause them to, you know, sort of pop out of place. And causes develop. pain, essentially, right? Totally, and it'll exacerbate sacroiliac joint dysfunction. And then it also, you're maximizing shear, shear uh, through L5S1, which is already under a lot of strain because it bears all of the weight of the vertebral column, the head, the rib cage, your arms, etc. Yeah. And a lot of yogis have sacroiliac pain. So many of us do. And a lot of us also experience pain in the inferior lumbar from lumbar three to five. And we're exacerbating it by practicing Poses like Bharat Vajrasana with a fixed pelvis. Awesome. Okay, I'm going to do the pose, but first, last question, because I know someone's going to write it in the comments below. This question I get a lot on these videos is like, but then why do so many people teach to anchor the sit bones? Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to say something. I wanted to say something so inappropriate. And snarky. 
<laughs> just, yeah, just because people are teaching it doesn't mean that it's correct. You know, people also eat margarine, you know, so, yeah. and drink sugary soda pop. Yeah. That doesn't mean that it's healthy. Just because it's familiar doesn't mean it's healthy. Yeah. And, you know, fortunately, there are a lot of nerds out there, science nerds out there who are infiltrating, you know, uh, various movement lineages and sharing that, you know, that's not actually the way the body moves. Right. Or, I mean, that, yes. And for me, it's also just about like, why don't we, why, why are we so beholden to this received alignment wisdom? And why are we so unwilling to try something and practice in a way that actually feels good in our bodies and doesn't cause pain? It's like, who, what's more important? This exterior, external authority of the way it's supposed to be that my yoga teacher or her yoga teacher's teacher's teacher said, or what feels good today in my practice. It's like, you know, I, I just do what feels good because I'm home alone. Like nobody's going to know. Yeah. The uh, asana police are not going to come for you. And if they do show them how to practice Bharat Vajrasana this way, and they'll give you a promotion. <laughs> exactly. Okay, let me jump on to into the pose. So I'm going to practice without a mat. I think you can see me better with these dark pants. How is this, Mary? Shall I move back? Yes. Yeah. Oh, and wait one moment. Let me turn off this video. I think that's a little confusing for everybody. All right. Okay, so do you want me to face you, Mary, or to the side? Turn a bit to the side, Lizzie. A, a little bit more. Just, I just want to sort of see um, the difference in your sitting bones. Okay. Um, Okay, uh, could you present your back to me for just a moment? Okay, would you anchor your sitting bones? Yeah, there, okay. Okay, all right, and then, and then just anchor your right thigh bone, let your sitting bones go. Okay, so I like this view better. Okay. Okay, but maybe start facing me so it's not so weird. <laughs> okay, so I'll go to the right. And you know what I do is I sometimes take a block because my torso is quite long. I like to put my fingers on something because mm -hmm. they don't really come all the way to the floor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, I definitely like the back view because we can really see the difference in your vertebral column and... Okay, so as I'm going into the pose in the way Mary likes, I'm letting my left hip come with me and turn, turn, turn. So there's a lot of space here between my butt yes. and the floor. Yes. Hmm. Yeah. Are we recording? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, I didn't realize that. I was just messing with the camera angles for now and thinking. I, I was in a different space, Lizzie. I was in a totally different space. Okay. <laughs> okay. So what would you like me is this? Yeah. So let's do, we're doing it. This is it. Okay, yeah, so you can feel the difference when you let your left side of the pelvis lead mm -hmm. the twist. Mm -hmm. It's now you can have, you know, an exorcism moment. You're Linda Blair in The Exorcist, and you can turn around and look at the camera behind you. Right. Now, if you unwind mm -hmm. and plant that left sitting bone, do not let your sitting bones move. Okay. 
and then exhale into the twist. Yeah. Okay, and you can feel the flexion in your lumbar, yeah? Yeah. And you can't talk because you can't breathe. No, and I don't feel on my side abdominal muscles. When I let my hip go, I feel this lovely stretch here. Yes, and what happens when you just let that left sitting bone rise and you led with your the left ilium, you, your pelvis then just naturally rolls over and around the convex heads of your thigh bones. So your sacrum, which is like our rudder, is turned in the direction that you're twisting. Okay. The bones are staying together. Your sacrum and your ilia are staying to, together. Okay. And your lumbar just naturally gets out of the way and moves into a neutral lumbar curve. Yeah. And then you get all of that deliciousness in both your external and internal obliques. And you can probably feel it as well in between your ribs and your intercostal muscles. Mm -hmm. All right, let me do the second side. And would you talk me through it the way you would teach the pose? Yes. So you position your legs comfortably for you and you allow sunshine and light under the back hip. In this case, your right hip. So you could slide your hand under your bum. Yeah, totally. And instead of thinking about pushing your sitting bones down, I want you to press the center of your left thigh bone down. Okay. Press the left thigh bone down. Mm -hmm. And from that anchor point, exhale and roll your right hip over and around to the left. Yes. Exhale and see if you can squeeze out a little bit more air in your belly. Yeah, yeah. And I like how you're keeping your chin aligned with your breastbone. A lot of folks will turn the head, they'll over rotate the head because it gives the illusion of rotation. Yeah. But now you can feel how the rotation is really in your torso. Yeah. It's like, and you grow out basin of the pelvis yeah it's yes so lovely and I why is it Mary that I've been loving twists so much postpartum because you're you're repacking your belly space mm -hmm. you know your organs shifted around tremendously and so the twists are phenomenal for just helping get your organ tone back because just like muscles have tone, so do our organs and nerves. Really? All right, let me yes. tell you why. I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. They have a resting frequency and you don't want flaccid organs. <laughs> there isn't a blue pill for that. <laughs> Another thing to worry about. Oh my God, my liver is just so sloppy today. Well, let me tell you, when I had my hysterectomy on December 23rd, 2019, <laughs> um, my, I had tremendous problems and my um, uterus was the size of a soccer ball. And I had fibroids growing on the outside of my uterus, et cetera. And my surgeon said to me, this procedure was supposed to take an hour, it took three. But he said to me, it was so easy to remove your uterus because your organs were, they just slid. You have no adhesions, your organs are beautiful. And it made the procedure a lot easier because I had so much visceral mobility. Everything was sliding and gliding the way that it's supposed to. And that's what twists can do for us. They don't detox us. <laughs> Detoxification is a physiologic process that takes place in the liver and the kidneys, mm -hmm. okay? But what twists do for us is they help with our organ motility. Like, awesome, something I didn't even know that I need, I'm already yeah. doing. 
All yeah, right. And after you've had baby babies, in your case, twists are just wonderful for you, especially practicing them with from the pelvis, initiating the rotation from the pelvis, because that's going to protect your sacroiliac joints as well as your low back. Fabulous. Thank you so much, Mary. My pleasure. All right. Tell us where we can find you online. Uh, yoga with Mary Richards on Insta and Facebook and um, Mary Richards Yoga just for a few more weeks on uh, the World Wide Web, the internet. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Here is where you can find both of us, experientialanatomy.yoga. This is the newsletter where we have all of our fun and games and where we give you all the information about our online courses as we create new ones. Thank you so much, Mary. Namaste. Namaste, Lizzie. Bye.